Black yeah. Forest. Start, 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 start. I will explain a little bit about the Kuklok history here well, and how we make so generally clocks in the Black Forest. As you can see, we have loads of clocks here. Cuckoo clock, grandfather clocks, table clocks. We're mainly talking about here the cuckoo clocks at the moment. This is the replica of the first generation made in the Black Forest, the so-called wooden beam clock because we have these two wooden beams at the top. Those are regulating the speed of the clock. They didn't have, in this time they didn't have any pendulum yet, but they had the wooden beams instead. You can see it's a very simple clock, has no batteries inside, running by this piece of stone here. The rock goes down, stone, and needs to be wound up every 12 hours. So basically twice a day. Has only one hand for the hour, so there is no minute hand, but you can still read the time. It even stands under eight, that means it's eight o'clock. Has three wooden wheels as part of the mechanism, has no music, no sound, has no cuckoo whatsoever. This clock belongs to the first generation of the Black Forest clock. Later on, they started to make different types of clocks. After 80 years later, around 1720, they came up with the idea having a big shield and painting it. That's what is called a painted face clock, also called a shield clock because of the big shield. Okay, here appears the two metal hands, one for the hour and one for the minute. So these clocks are quite accurate. In particular, this one is called an industry stay look. Okay, also called as a modern low look. Have a look. The tailor is working in his workshop and behind him a woman. So let's see what he gets if he doesn't work harder. <laughs> Gently encourages him to work harder. It's the same thing in India too. The ladies are smiling, so it must be. <laughs> now let me show you some secret tools what we have in Germany where we have to hide them from the mothering blows. <laughs> okay, now this one here is called a dumpling eater. He's a very happy chef. He gets there with his dumplings every half hour and on the hour as well. He eats a lot, but he never puts on weight. He's also a glowy. He never gets fat. And we can move on to the third generation, which is this one here. These clocks made on the Industrial Revolution in Germany, which is occurred around 1860. I need some attention, please. Thank you. Occurred around 1860 onwards when the first train came to the, into the Black Forest. You can see here the track of the train. And this part of Germany, as you said, is a very warm part. It's actually the warmest part of Germany. We have lots of um, vineyards here. There's a vine growing area, so that's where you can see the leaves of the vine grapes too. <laughs> and the cookie as well, of course. Now the big one here, it's moving like a traditional style. Here you can see the pine trees at the sides. For example, this part is one piece, so the person who had made the carvings, if he had made a slight mistake, he had to start all over again. As you can see, it's quite detailed, richly decorated. Approximately takes about five to six weeks to make this clock. It has a deep cuckoo sound. And if you look up, you can able to see the people dancing around. Yeah. Okay, you might have noticed the three weights underneath the clock. Do you know why do we have the three weights here? Any idea? No? One for the timekeeping. No, these are not decorations. These all are mechanical clocks by the way, just that you know. They are running by the gravity of the weights. They don't have any batteries inside, they're all running by weight. One for the timekeeping, one for the cooking, and one for the music. Okay? So how they're making clocks? First they have to choose the wood, which is this one here, called in English lime wood. It's a very soft wood, very good for carving. Takes about four years to dry and they can start to carve it. Yeah, they pile them up and wait four years, but obviously they have enough, you know, woods to work with. Yeah, they have not. exactly. So first they tend to make the clock case, the only piece done by the soap, like one of these old sew machines. And later on comes the decoration. Like this. Is our hand called? 
and into the clock case. For we need something to drive. Here we have the mechanism. Here we have our four type of mechanical movements. For example, for the one day clock, eight day clock, one day clock, eight day clock movement. These today don't have any music, and these ones they have. Can you see the disc on the top? That's where the people are dancing. These uh, mechanisms or movements, mechanical movements, are made around made uh, out of brass and also stainless steel so very strong very good quality running about 60 to 70 years that's what we can say all our mechanical clocks running about a lifetime now as i quickly uh, showed you we have here the weights the small weights the size of the finger for the one day clocks so if you buy one of these clocks then you got to wind the clock once a day don't forget that one day clocks we have here that with the heavier weights these are belong to the eight day clocks. If you got, if you buy one of these clocks, then you got to wind the clock only once a week. Okay. And the cuckoo sound is produced by this little bellows here. The bellows are giving the bird sound. Very simple mechanism. Here you can see there's a little hole. There where the air, air fall, uh, yeah, flows in and out. In and out, okay, and the wide bit is made out of nylon and cotton. We have different sizes for the different clocks. The sound is slightly different from the other. For the small clocks, for the baby clocks, has a high pitch sound, whereas for the bigger bellows, they have a deeper sound. If you'd like to follow me to the other side, please, I'd like to show you some of our clocks and I will tell you the testing.